Item 10, conduct of business. We're going to um, look at adopting a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a construction contract with Atlas uh, Pelizari Electric, Inc. for the SCADA radio transmitter installation project in the amount of $143,219, approving a construction contingency of $20,000, approving a total construction budget in the amount of $173,219, appropriating $30,000 in wastewater capital funds, and reducing water capital appropriation funds by $30,000. Jimmy? Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. The City's capital improvement program includes the supervisory control and data acquisition of the otherwise known as SCADA, radio transmitter project that will provide new secondary backup, data communication, and transmission service for all water and wastewater facilities. The city staff has been using SCADA system to remotely control and manage tank levels, water system pressures, alarm conditions, wet well levels, and pump operations at pumping facilities. It also allows staff to proactively address any potential <coughs> system disruptions and continuous monitoring of the water and wastewater system without having to be on site at each facility. Currently, the city has two sources of data communication transmission for the water and wastewater SCADA systems. The San Bruno Cable Television Broadband Network is the primary means of data transmission that remain in its capacity. The secondary transmission service is currently provided through a dial-up modem uh, telephone system. The dial-up modem system has been an issue and is currently non-operational as several water facilities or doesn't exist. When the primary cable network goes offline, the telephone network doesn't allow the operation staff to remotely monitor the facilities, meaning they can't see the SCADA interface on their computer desktop screens or laptops or even their mobile device to turn off or on the pumps or view tank levels, wet well levels or monitor water pressures uh, in the system. This project would replace the dial modem system with the new radio transmission network, which is the industry standard for SCADA systems. Back in January 27th, um, staff came to City Council to recommend an award to contract to EDCO Group, which includes the design of the electrical component and to determine the appropriate locations to best serve the communications at five wastewater facilities and 12 water facilities, and also at a corp corporation yard. The ECHO's contract included providing new touch panels, uh, skated radio transmitters, uh, uh, the radios and antennas, performing radio surveys, and providing new uh, programmable logic controllers to replace old units. At, at that time, the staff report also included information that a contract would follow for an electrical contractor to install the electrical components. Uh, this project is being recommended. The project that's being recommended today, uh, tonight, is the um, for the electrical contractor's work. The current scope of work consists of the contractor to perform the installation of the communication equipment at all 18 locations. And all the electrical components, such as the conduits, antennas, antenna mass, and cables will be installed by the electrical contractor. Staff advertised for bid twice in the newspaper, once on uh, July 16th and the other on the 23rd. The two bids were received and opened on August the 4th, and the two bids were closely related to one another, about a difference of $5,000. Um, the engineer's estimate was approximately $120,000 for this project, and the low bid received is approximately 19% above the engineer's estimate. And staff believe that it's due to the low interest in the project by contractors that have full work schedules. The apparent low bidder meets the contractor's qualifications and the requirements as specified in the contract documents and their bid proposal was determined to be responsive and responsible. In addition to the construction price, staff is recommending a $20,000 uh, construction contingency for, to address any unforeseen conditions during construction and 10000 for project management and construction inspection. If awarded, this construction is anticipated to begin in, April, in October 2015, and uh, the project, being that it's in the city's you know, enclosed uh, water and wastewater facilities, it won't impact any uh, public right-of-way during the installation. As for the budget, these, you know, the SCADA radio transmitter project has a total budget of $375,000 in the CIP program. Both the ETCO group and with the electrical uh, construction contract and the construction contingency and the inspection and staff managed plan are all within the total approved uh, budget in the CIP. However, staff is recommending a modification of the project funding 
sources to accurately account for the work split between the water and wastewater facilities. The re reallocation of the costs is being done to better reflect the actual costs provided by the contractor. Currently, there's funding of um, $310,000 from water capital fund and $65,000 from the wastewater capital fund. Staff is recommending an appropriation of $30,000 in the wastewater fund for a total of $95,000 and reducing the capital water capital fund by $30,000 to $280,000. With that, therefore, staff is recommending to adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with uh, Alice Palazzari Electric for the SCADA radio transmitter project. With that, I take any questions. Good. Any questions for staff? Michael? Chair, thank you. Um, so when, um, when we looked at this before, I, I had concerns about um, um, spending money on uh, basically a redundant system. This is the backup to a system that's fairly stable, and I know during an emergency we could lose that and we would want to have a, a backup thing. I just didn't see the need to expedite that at that point. Um, so my, my um, complaint today is that um, I'm wondering why we couldn't have seen this whole, um, the whole scope of the project at one time and why we needed to wait until the first components were installed before we go back and look at the, the electrical and the antennas. Uh, rather than presenting this as a, you know, here's everything that's involved in it, here's a total cost, and then kind of move down that path and getting everything done, rather than doing it piecemeal. Great, that's, that's a great um, question. Um, one, you know, there are two approaches uh, to, to uh, doing this project when we evaluate it. One is to hire an electrical designer to design, you know, the entire SCADA system and go out for bid at once. Or the other option is to, you know, have ECHO, who is has actual experience with the uh, the, the city's uh, SCADA system as he has this company had already implemented uh, the system for the you know the city you know back in um, I believe 2008 or so and so with that you know, with with this with Edco's experience you know he has the knowledge of the, the city SCADA system and we chose to come forward with um, the Echo contract since he's providing all the electrical components or the SCADA components that is comp complementary to what is required, what is, what is, um, um, what will be easily integrated into the existing SCADA system. And so with that, he is providing the electrical services, which he did, uh, design services, and, and we're going out with the uh, electrical design, electrical construction services at a later time. Okay. So, so from reading this staff report, I'm, I'm getting that the work that we approved in January was related to, um, uh, replacing programmable logic controllers and um, other equipment, base equipment that was in there. And then this this portion of it was the follow-up, which was electrical and antennas, um, which to me seems like it's not, it, it, it doesn't seem to me like it needed to be that sequential. I mean, if you, if you, if you got one, one team of people replacing the, the logic controllers, why not move ahead with uh, I mean, the antennas, I, I can't imagine, are that complicated for, for these types of radio systems where you would uh, have to spend a lot of time planning out, uh, you know, how those are going to integrate with, with equipment. So, so maybe I'm oversimplifying it. Maybe I don't understand the, the complexity of these systems enough, but it, it, it doesn't seem that hard to me. Uh, any comment on that? Yeah, the, the, um, the antenna uh, and the, the conduit and the, uh, the antenna cable are or Echo is not a general contractor, so he can't install it. And so with that, an electrical um, contractor is required. And these antenna poles are, you know, 15, 20, 25 feet in height, and it requires an expert, um, you know, an, an, a, a contractor, a general contractor to install it. Um, we, we could have got, if we had to go out and um, one, one company to do both, again, we would have to design it up front. Everything would have to be designed and we would have to write the specifications and the technical uh, specifications in so that, you know, the, the contractor um, who is being selected would have to use the co right component uh, that is being supplied by, um, by that co. Okay. And, and I guess that's where I, where I struggle with this is that, 
it does seem like we're going in, into this piecemeal and we're designing kind of as we go and we're building a piece and then we're designing, we're building, we're designing, rather than having a, a complete plan and then going into it where you can come to us and say, look, here's, here's the whole vision, here's the design, here's what it's going to cost end to end. And, and you know, let's, let's talk about also maintenance and, you know, ongoing fees that are associated with this, which I don't know if there are any, but I don't see any in the report. So th that's kind of my complaint. It's just I'm, I'm used to seeing projects done a certain way, and, and you guys do them a little differently, and, and maybe that's the way they have to be done, but I'm not getting it. So let me try and, um, and answer the question in a little bit of a different way. Um, ADECO was viewed as an efficient way to get this particular project done, and because they're not a general contractor and couldn't do what, where they can contribute their extensive knowledge of the system and our SCADA requirements, they couldn't, um, we got the benefit of that, but we were then having to trade that against the, the, um, uh, um, the uh, benefit of um, having a, uh, somebody who's a general contractor. In other words, there, these things are not always simple and linear, um, but in this particular case, we made a decision to take advantage of ADECO's unique knowledge and their ability to promote efficiency in the de design development, understanding that we needed to subsequently get a different contractor. A different decision might have been made, but we would have sacrificed uh, efficiency on one end or the other of, of the equation. So we do make those analyses. I, I think I'm saying this correctly. We do make those analyses as part of our design and project planning development um, and where we can use the type of uh, more linear process or more consolidated process that you're talking about, we do. I think this project has, um, has what, what may not appear to be um, exceedingly complex issues is a little bit more complicated than meets the eye. Okay. All right. I well, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Rico? The Vice Mayor had asked a question. I don't know if that was answered. Is, is there other maintenance or costs? No. So what we have here is, is everything? Correct. And, on, and going on and, and all of that? Correct. Okay. Anyone else? Ken? Hi. Un unlike my colleague, the Vice Mayor, who probably would do this differently, I can get lost on this very easily. This is very complex mm -hmm. to me. And I don't expect us to learn to be electricians or engineers, but I think there needs to be a middle ground. And so in the future, as much as we, you want us to support a project of this magnitude, even if it's piecemeal, you're going to have to explain it to a lay people. You're going to have to simplify it a little more uh, because I can read through this and you know, you know how many times I can read it and still not get it. And so there's, a, there's either a measure of trust or there's going to be questions that are, you know, probably unwarranted, but we just want to understand and we want to, you know, we want to make sure that we're making the right decision. Mm -hmm. So if it's explained in the simplest form that this is the process that's going to happen is that we have to go through process for EDCO and then come back with the general contractor. And I think it's going to be a lot easier, uh, more easier to to uh, to accept. Uh, but again, we're smart people up here, but there's stuff that is just really another language. Yeah. Uh, Council Member Ibarra, it's, it's a good question. The, the, the concept, if you want to simplify this, the SCADA system is separate from the first part and the second part are totally separate things. The SCADA system allows our staff to be able to remotely understand what's happening in each of these five wastewater and 12 water pump stations. Now, how actually that information gets back to us and goes back and forth between that corporation yard and each of these pump stations is the concern, which is the second part of the equation. The first part is that communication should be set up with this program. So all these equipment, all these logic panels, et cetera, has to be able to communicate with the corporation yard. Now, how do you actually do the communication? It's a totally separate part. You can do the communication 
via uh, cable, which we already have, and we already have communication via uh, phone lines. The problem with the phone lines is if cable goes down, the phone line does, is not two-way communication. The phone line just tells us there's a problem. But we, we won't be able to adjust the pumps. We won't be able to do any, anything further than that unless we send somebody actually to a pump station and try to do the controls manually. So what we want to do is the SCADA system has to rely on certain communication forms to be able to go back and forth between each of these locations and the headquarters, which is located at the corporation yard. So this is just a second part of it. You can have a different kind of communication, but the radio transmission is one form of communication that's been very reliable. That's what the industry uses throughout the United States and overseas as well. And this is what we recommend as a second part of the SCADA program. Through the chair, what, one uh, argument I would have to that is that essentially in this report you're you're blending the two so to say that they are separate is confusing because you're saying we need to replace antiquated touch panels and uh, uh, programmable logic controllers so basically you're upgrading your SCADA in order to accommodate new communication so to me that makes them completely one it's, it's one decision because if we decide we don't want radios then we don't have to upgrade SCADA and so it's, I, I don't see how you can separate them I'm just going to uh, chime in because I will echo what uh, Ken said. The first question the vice mayor asked, and I turned to the mayor, I said, I'm at a loss now. So um, I think the vice mayor brings up some great questions. I'm hoping, I don't know if you're more satisfied with some of the responses that you have, but I think going forward too, it helps us, I think, up here too, to understand the global picture first, and I understand that you need to take it in pieces. It depends upon the project and as it's evaluated. But also when we see something coming back and we're starting to ask ourselves and we're trying to remember back, simplicity is great, the layperson needs to understand, and we need to be able to respond to the, to the public when they start asking about our expenditures and, and what we're doing. So um, I'd like to echo uh, some of what Council Member Ibera said as far as going forward uh, would be helpful, and I appreciate the Vice Mayor's inquiries. All right. Any other questions or comments or action by the Council? Through the Chair. Michael? Um, I, I still have my concerns about um, the expediency of this particular project, but it looks like the ship has sailed, and rather than leave this system half built, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, throw my approval behind it, and with that, I'll introduce the resolution. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye.